to the store, man. What y'all, y'all game banging, man. I went game and walk to the store one time. Never been no killing without killing. I'm a bitch. I ain't never been a bitch, y'all. I ain't never been a bitch, y'all. Never been no killing without killing. I ain't did this is like 2011. We marched into the stove, y'all. Straight alley, 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 alley. Oh, we folding up, we walking, y'all. Never been no killing without killing. Hey, look, y'all better hurry up, though. I ain't even been in the stove that long. I ain't catching another cake. They gonna lock the door, fool them. Twill coming here. Hey, look crazy. You know, it's getting nice out. It's a nice day today, you know. Who we plotting on that, man? No. Send me a picture or something, man. Who we gonna plot on that? Melly, Yarmel Williams, who was on the drill scene in Chicago, died at an early age of 27. Melly was future on season one, Doc UF9 of Greenlight. Greenlight is a docudrama series that outlines the causes of the effects. Final Hours lays the last moments of a person's life, and Greenlight focuses on entirety. Yarmel Williams' decisions caused his demise, but through someone else's fault lies correction and change. Though Melly had clout, he also had ops. In Chirac, if one doesn't have ops, he cannot have clout. They go hand in hand. They are a package deal in Chicago. At an early age, Melly became clicked up with the MCs on 49th, 50th, and 51st in the Woodlawn community. While Young Money or MC Renegades, Melly himself was a BD. Melly was raised with the BDs at the Castle Projects on 62nd and Columet, but he has expressed that he would smoke any of them if they dropped him wise or dissing the game. Okay, so I'm finna take y'all down the block to 051 Young Money on Cottage Grove. Here is the story of 051 Melly. O51 Melly was born and raised on the south side of Chirac. Growing up in Chirac is like playing Perfect. Temple Run and attempts to stay alive to get from point A to point B. Melly started hanging on 51st and Cottage where he eventually made it official after Zico died. Zico was killed by a member of THF-46 while TYMB, Oblock, and FBG beefed over Tuka and OD. After Zico died, CPD issued an arrest warrant for IQ Walton who admitted to being a member of THF. After Zico's death, Lil Mark started claiming Zico gang. Then when Fax was killed, he began to say, on Fax. After Fax's death, Melly started repping 051 even harder and even promised get back for his brother Fax. Right now, boy, the gang. 
Why well, I look like y'all finna run, bro? <laughs> that wasn't nobody. <laughs> wasn't nobody, man. While Melly adapted to his fellow Young Money team, they took to Instagram to dock your interactions with each other while walking to the stove. Melly started addressing himself as a hot boy team player as he started to become the head of 051, an underlying branch of Young Money. By this time, 051 had already lost Young Money Zico, Fat, Lil Mark, and other 051 members who were booked on murder. Melly took Fat's death to heart, even renaming himself to Fat's older brother on Twitter. While many Young Money members were often gangbanging, Melly was more about money and rather deal with the situation when he stumbled across them. Melly didn't like op shopping. When he wasn't with Young Money, he was dropping money on dice games and copping retro 11s, which are around 400 a pop if you got the right plug. Walk through every alley. I would never walk on front street. Melly's status turned way up when he started addressing himself as the grave digger, which means exactly what it says. Melly wasn't afraid to stand on his name openly. In fact, he welcomed it and embraced it as the grave digger. As Melly's legacy turned up, so did the hate from his ops. Melly became the grave digger, so he put it to action when he told THF he on 47, now pop out. Driz at LaFlair responded to Melly that he on 47 for no reason and he ain't gonna do nothing. Melly responded telling him to come find out. Melly wasn't afraid to diss dead people. Members in 051 diss the deceased a lot, especially Lil Mark. Lil Mark had expressed he wanted to have the hardest diss track in Chirac. Well, in March of 2014, he did just that. He released one of the hardest diss tracks in Chicago. Lil Mark released no competition, which took aim at 300, O Block, THF, and 600. That diss ultimately cost Lil Mark his life. The death of Lil Mark affected Melly just as hard as the death of Facts. Melly took revenge on anyone who dissed his fellow brothers in the game. Draw City Booby and Jakira had got into an altercation and Jakira dissed facts. So Booby dissed Tuka. Jakira claimed 051 Kiddo wrote a letter dissing Tuka. So KI responded saying F facts. Booby then responded stating dissing Tuka. Melly never took revenge on Jakira as they were friends on Facebook. Jakira told Melly she only dissed 051 cause Kiddo was dissing Tuka. Melly and 051 accepted Jakira's apology and Booby and Jakira became friends again on social media. Melly was on the fast track of emotional contagion, which is the process of transferring emotions from one person to another. Members from 051 
starts to get killed and Melly vowed for revenge on any set that dissed his dead homies. The biggest war started boiling from 44th to 51st, from THF to 051, from a killer set to a ruthless gang. Both sets started sliding and members started dying. Zico was killed, then 051 adopted Zico World, a Zico gang, then Fax was killed. And now Lil Mark. After Melly lost Mark, Zico, and Fax, he turned heartless. Melly stated that he would forever dig graves for Fax. Melly nicknamed himself the Grave Digger. Melly's heart started to grow cold. He really missed Fax. Fax was killed by 600, and Melly stated, Get back is coming for Lil Mark and facts so dig a grave a member from 600 dis facts and melly responded boy i'm a real grave digger who you think killed shaq you're not a killer so stop dissing paraphrasing restating the essence of a sender's message in our own words melly was heartless he went on to further diss Shaq by stating, Now that Shaq's deceased, who's gonna kiss his ugly ass son? Now that he did. Melly didn't have a premonition of himself dying, but Death itself was looking for him. And member stated to Melly, Dude, when I see you, I'ma kill you. I can merch that. Melly responded, R.I.P. Facts and Lil Mark. I'm steady dropping bodies. The devil better start thanking me. He a smooth killer. Melly hated 600 for killing Facts and Lil Mark. He wanted to redig D Thang and kill him again. D Thang was a deceased 600 member who was killed by Jaro, who Melly was tight with. Or so we thought. Melly was not invincible. He ran through an attribute of emotion that referred to whether the emotion reflected a positive or negative feeling. That's valence. Symbolic interaction. The theory that our understanding of ourselves and of the world is shaped by our interactions with those around us. O found one interacted and shaped themselves with killers. Ophile One Drilla, who is a known gang member in Woodlawn, turned the heat up when he dropped 51 dead ops. He dissed other sets dead homies. He especially hit members who were die Y. While Melly was absent, Drilla went on to drop the hardest diss track in 2018. He dissed Bobo from THF, LA from 600, 600 Lil Boo, Raheem, Nooski, Fahim, Boss Rail, Pluto, and 42 more dead ops. After 051 Driller dropped his diss track, he was spotted on social media, drunk in a hotel lobby with his gang passed out he really gotta be careful i don't want to see him caught lacking driller please be watchful his diss track started to trend and others started dropping similar diss tracks as well melly gave credit to driller for that track and stated it was fire and that the ops can respond melly went to desirable high school on 50th and State. That's how he linked with the MCs on 51st, and he became official after Zico died. Melly was really close with Joe City, Snowblock, on 64th and South Ellis. 64th and South Ellis is Melly's last known address, as he lived there with his father and grandmother, being his mother passed away. That took a toll on Yarmel. 
it forced him to be raised by his grandmother. Now we all know OTF and Mubu used to be close, evident by Lil Dirk being in King Louie's Michael Jordan video and Louie being in Dirk's Jackson visual. People wonder why their relation turned cold. It went south when 600 killed T Streets from 051. So Melly and the 051 member slid on Shaq. A 600 member killed Fax and then Tricks was killed. Then in retaliation, 051 slid on LA as payback. Then 600 slid on Polo and Lil Mark. After Melly's status, when 051 gave him the legendary status as a grave digger, he took that to a sense of gratitude and pride, and then he ran with it. Melly had expressed that his life on earth would be short-lived if he was caught lacking. He had already been shot multiple times, and he was much more responsive in how he moved. Well, on September 1st, 2019, Melly was shot multiple times in the body. The shooting happened just after midnight on the 6100 block of South STL in the Woodlawn community. Melly received a call from one of the homies asking if he wanted to attend a party in Draw City. Melly asked the member who was going to be there. He responded, just Jaro, the block, and some women. Melly responds, I'm in. Melly then goes to the crib and gets dressed to attend the party on 61st and STL. His friend informs Melly the party was a celebration of Ken Get Right, who was killed months prior. It's his day. Two hours before the party started, Melly received a phone call to not come that a TW member he had been beefing with was coming. And Melly responded, no, nah, I'm coming. Melly and the TW member had passed beefs about 051 members dissing Brick and Kobe. Plus, Melly had a personal beef with a certain TW member, and you all know who that is. In 2013, the TW member's house was shot up, and Melly took clout for that shooting, and TW looked at Melly sideways, but Tukaville loved Melly. A year later, Epigy Duck spoke with the TW member to squash the beef with Melly. Wooski and Duck and Jakira also told him to let it go. The TW member was best friends with Jakira before she died. After the death of Jakira, the shooting with Wooski and Duck's departure, there was no enforcers to keep the peace with 051. The TW members dropped it until 051 started dissing TW members, deceased homies, FBG Brick and Kobe Mac. 051 was smoking on Brick and Kobe. As Melly pulls up to the party, they start to have fun at the get together to honor Can't Get Right. 
Melly starts to shoot dice when he notices vibes coming from a certain TW member that Melly could sense wasn't right. In a spider revenge, the TW member pulls out his weapon and fires over seven shots into Melly, then flees the scene of the shooting. Here is the front gate of the entry of the party. And here is the back yard of the building. Melly was rushed to the University of Chicago Medical Center where he died shortly after arriving. He passed away at the young age of 27. Hey Pooh, I had a dream about you before you died and I want to share it with you. Oh, this my Babe, jam, nigga. a black cave need to realize get up off the streets it can be done you was with me it's kind of blur now but long story short i was with you or you was with me for some reason i forgot where we was headed but it was some other dudes with us wherever we went and something popped off but i guess you wasn't paying it no attention you just kind of brushed it off like you always do i love you as i begin to walk off you came behind me and started looking around and then they pulled off their guns. I can't remember if you got hit, but I think you did. But you end up killing both of them. But I know you was hit because we had to go to the hospital afterwards. Keep your head up and be watchful. It's a lot of dudes out there trying to get you. Screaming and crying because my heart hurt. You don't know how this makes me feel. This is so damn real.